The nonlinear behavior of MOSFET current warrants another look. So when we derived an expression for MOSFET current, IDS was equal to mu n C oxide W over L into VGS minus V threshold into VDS minus VDS square over 2. And it's important to stress the fact that current in general is affected by two factors, the charge concentration in the conductive surface and the velocity at, we, at which this charge moves. Our conductive surface here is the channel between the source and the drain. The uh, amount of inversion charge present is responsible for the current, but also the velocity at which this current, at, the, at which this charge moves. When we started to draw IDS versus VDS, we noticed that for very small values of VDS, it was linear. And actually, we can obtain um, an expression for the value of the slope for very slow, small values of VDS. It's going to be mu n C oxide W over L into VGS minus V threshold. But as VDS increases, we start to see some nonlinearity with increasing levels of nonlinearity the more uh, the higher the value of VDS. The nonlinearity is obviously introduced by the minus VDS square over 2 term. So we have to understand where this nonlinearity comes from. Nonlinearity in the current expression indicates that there are two factors affecting current here. One is trying to increase the value of current, one is trying to pull back on the value of current. So far, for this graph, the phenomenon that is trying to increase current is winning, and the phenomenon that is trying to decrease current is only um, gaining some ground, but it's still not winning. So if we look at the current expression, it's going to be the product of charge multiplied by velocity. When we increase VDS, we increase the horizontal field between the drain and the source. And so the horizontal field increases because we know that the velocity of electrons is equal to mu n times the horizontal field, then increasing VDS is going to increase velocity. And so with increasing VDS, velocity goes up. Because we don't see a linear increase, we have to think about what happens to Q inversion, which is the total charge in the channel. VGS is going to remain the same, so charge at the source end of the channel is going to remain the same. But as we increase VDS, V drain is going to increase. VGD is equal to V gate minus V drain. So increasing V drain is going to lead to a decrease in VGD. A decrease in VGD means less potential coupling charge at the drain end of the channel. So if we increase VGD, we decrease the amount of charge at the drain. And there is some relationship for um, the charges in the middle of the channel so that we have a charge profile looking like this. If we increase drain potential even further, we're going to decrease charge at the drain even further. We keep increasing drain potential, we keep decreasing the amount of charge. So there are two factors here. More drain potential means charges are moving faster, but that there are less charges moving faster, which is winning. Up to the point we have drawn in the graph, the velocity is winning because we see a net increase in current. However, the expression for current is an expression of a parabola, and every parabola either has a maximum or a minimum. In this case, the parabola has a maximum. We can uh, obtain the value of VDS at which the maximum occurs by differentiating the current and equating the uh, derivative to zero, and it's going to give us the fact that the maximum of the parabola occurs at VDS is equal to VGS minus V threshold. If we take the expression VDS equals VGS minus V threshold, we can we can see that it is equal to VGS minus VDS equals V threshold. And VGS minus VGS is VGD. And so it occurs when VGD equals V threshold, which is also the point at which the channel fully, dis fully disappears at the drain. And so we have a charge profile that looks like this. We have a channel that looks like this. 
We have charges at the source end, but no charges at the drain end. We call this pinch off. And pinch off means that the channel has been completely pinched off at the drain and no longer exists. This doesn't mean that current does not flow when we pinch off the channel. Current will actually continue to flow. If we increase VDS above this pinch off level, VDS equals VGS minus V threshold, if we continue with the equation for the parabolic current, we will see current decreasing. This is not going to occur because this insinuates a negative large signal resistance, which is not going to happen. So instead, what's going to happen is that the current is going to saturate at the last level we saw at the pinch off point. And so we call this region of MOSFET operation the saturation region. And so now the, the MOSFET has um, three regions of operation. First off, we have the cutoff region. And in the cutoff region, the MOSFET has no channel. And this occurs when VGS is less than V threshold. And so we are still in depletion or accumulation mode and IDS is equal to zero. The transistor is going to be on when VGS is greater than V threshold. But when VGS is greater than V threshold, we are in one of two modes. Either VDS is less than VGS minus V threshold or VDS is greater than VGS minus V threshold. If VDS is greater than VGS minus V threshold, that means that VGD is less than V threshold and pinch off has occurred. And we say that we are in the saturation regime. For VDS less than VGS minus V threshold, we are still in the parabolic expression of current, which we call the ohmic region. And in the ohmic region, current is equal to mu n C oxide W over L into VGS minus V threshold into VDS minus VDS square over 2. So what is the expression of current in the saturation regime? The expression of current in the saturation regime is equal to the expression of current in the ohmic regime at the last point we saw ohmic current, which is the point of pinch off. So we should substitute for VDS equal to VGS minus V threshold. If we substitute for this in the um, ohmic equation, we obtain a saturation current equal to mu n C oxide W over L times half VGS minus V threshold all square. So this is the expression of pinch off saturation current. Now, if we look at this current, it ceases to be a function of VDS. It ceases to be a function of the drain terminal. And so current between the drain and the source is no longer a function of the voltage between the drain and the source. This is the behavior of a current source Specifically, it is a voltage-controlled nonlinear current source where the current between the drain and the source is controlled by the gate potential. We can even see it from the graph here, where the graph of the current in saturation regime is flat, indicating that the resistance we see at the drain is infinite. Notice that the slope of the graph here is proportional to the conductance we see at the drain because it is equal to DIDS by DVDS. Now, the, each of these graphs is drawn for a, a different level of VGS. We see from the saturation current expression that we are only a function of VGS. A higher VGS leads to more saturation current, so VGS3 is greater than VGS2 and VGS2 is greater than VGS1. In ohmic regime, we are a function of VGS, but we are also a function of VDS. So take this graph, for example. If we increase VGS, we move to this graph, which has higher current. And the reason we have higher current is because we have increased Q. So increasing um, VGS leads to an increase in Q. But we also see an increase in current as we sweep VDS. And this is due to an increase in V, the uh, velocity. So where is the uh, graph for cutoff region? The graph for cutoff region is actually the x-axis because on the x-axis, current is going to be zero regardless of where uh, of what the value of VDS is. Now, looking back at the expression of current, whether in saturation or in ohmic, we um, sometimes give everything outside the bracket, the uh, symbol K, 
Um, and k includes all the constants in the equation. k actually consists of two components, mu and C oxide, and uh, W over L. And mu and C oxide is uh, basically controlled by the uh, process. So C oxide is epsilon oxide by T oxide, is the oxide capacitance per unit area, and is controlled by the thickness of the oxide, which is beyond the control of the designer. It is up to the uh, fab or up to the process we are using. Mu or the mobility is also a function primarily of doping levels, which is beyond the control of the designer. But W and L, the width and the length of the drawn transistor, are actually the main design parameters that we have access to. And so we divide K into two components, K and dash, which includes mu N and C oxide, which are not within our control, and W over L, the aspect ratio, which is our main design parameter.